I don't know what to tell you. I tried a couple of different things between putt putt and doing the super book essay. They seem to like you more for reasons that escape me. No, that doesn't mean you're gonna get any kind of raise. Like, we make money doing this? We do this because we have mental problems. It's our shared therapy. Oh, hey. Uh. Yeah, just letting you know what's going on with the box and I. So, it's back. Um, you notice that things look a little different. Uh. The wall is blue. It is no longer, uh, whatever that ass color was before. Uh, and, uh, this is what we have settled on. And today, Give It A Shot returns. So, what do we got today? If you forgot the format, well, it's pretty simple. There are five selections here, and... Put them in this box, shake it up, and whatever shakes out is what we watch. So, returning favorites. We've got Otto Be Good, Out of the Wilderness. It's like if cars decided to go cheaper and more dumb. Uh, Hip Hop Shop, Dance Like Britney and Justin. I can only imagine. Uh, Castillo in Mission Mouse. Don't know, don't care. Itty Bitty Heartbeats. It looks cute because they're all hearts. <laughs> I'm dying inside as I'm saying this. And the new, brand new entry into our series. This is Allegories. And I think everything's nothing but owl puns. Be still my heart. So, let's put the box into action. Oh, and would you look at that? We're gonna watch allegories. You know, sometimes this feels like uh, the price is right. You know, you've got contestants who have been there since the very beginning, and they don't make it. And then, you know, the sixth time through, they get the new person, like the last person who has a chance, and they get it automatic. And it's like these other people have had so many attempts, and they didn't. You, you guys got cheated, but I don't give a shit. <laughs> oh, God, I hate my life. I guess I could say I'm glad to be back. Whatever. Any but. Um, yeah, this is the new set. Uh, it's still the same room. I just updated things. Uh, my wife and I are working on the house, and it was finally time to take care of the shots room. Uh, and it desperately needed it. Uh, I don't know if any of you ever heard it, but the floor uh, was falling apart. The previous owners thought it was a really good idea to have uh, peel and stick flooring. Uh, but the problem with that is you better keep the stuff um, temperature controlled because if you don't, that stuff wilts. And that was the problem. So, like, if you heard me, like, when I was dancing or anything like that, you'd hear, like, a. <laughs> that was the floor. But now I actually have a nice floor in here so I'm not constantly grossed out uh, grossed out is a little bit of a strong word but it's nicer in here new paint um, I kinda thought this might serve as a chroma key I don't know let's try it right now is it working does it look like I'm underwater I don't know. Um, I'm still working on that part. Um, it's kind of the reason why I went this way, but uh, eh, whatever. I don't mind doing it like this. So, 
today uh, we got another Christian media piece. I swear, I'm not, I'm not doing this on purpose. It's the luck of the draw, and I've said it before so many times that the bargain bin discount stuff that I find at used media stores, this is the cheapest stuff. I'm not doing this to bash anything. I mean, if you listen to my, my Superbook review essay, whatever you want to call it, it's like, I'm cool with a lot of it, but, you know, sometimes the message is weak. So, transitioning into that is this week. Um, uh, that's kind of hard to say. Um, this is a newer thing. Uh, this is from, from not, 2014, and uh, it's all about owls. Uh, in case you couldn't figure it out with allegories. And you got these five kids who uh, go to school to learn about God through nature. Not a bad premise. It's not the worst thing I've ever heard of. So maybe this will be okay. And so let's get into it uh, about what happens in allegories and the episode that i watched is called the sun and so the whole idea is i'm, I'm assuming the way that these th this entire episode went is this is the very first episode and so um in this episode uh they're learning about the sun now the problem that I have with it, and I'll, I'll get into it later, is basically their interaction with the sun and whatnot. So let's not dwell on that. Let's just get into the story right now. So story-wise, you've got five little owls uh, who are learning uh, about you know God's love and whatnot through nature. All right, cool. And seeing as how this is the first episode, we are introduced to the professor, and the professor has a lot of rumors about him uh, that I like to think are um, indicative of you know young kids. You know when they don't know somebody, they they hear things or think that they heard things, and they you know, create rumors. Um, like they they say things like, you know, this guy doesn't hand out A's. And the smart owl, she gets all, like, anxiety-ridden. I heard that he has never given an A to anyone, ever! Oh no, I've never made below an A before. And then another one is like, he's, he doesn't laugh at all. And I heard that he's never laughed in his whole life! Never? Never! Yeah, I get that. Authority figures sometimes can be... Um, intimidating especially when you're a child uh, and you know I can relate um, I don't like to think that I just hand out A's uh, I think you gotta ha kinda have to earn them I don't know that's just me um, in terms of laughing uh, I try to be stern but you know if my students drop some you know some good one-liners or something like that I'm gonna laugh I am human I see a lot of humor in things, and I, uh, I hope my, my, my students understand that. Um, and I mean, I've taken part in that. Uh, one thing I used to do when I was uh, getting my PhD, I, uh, <laughs> I would go into class, uh, and I, back then I looked much younger than this haggard thing you see in front of you, and I would, you know, sit in the seats with the students and if you know anything about college you know that usually the rule is if the professor isn't there in 10 minutes you're free to go and so you know I'm kind of banking on that so I do the one thing that a lot, I, I don't see a lot of students doing nowadays is like I would talk to other students and be like, hey hey have you heard anything about this this person like I, I've heard you know, they're a bit of a jerk, or, you know, I talk about the class, like, man, I don't, 
this is a BS class. I don't, I don't want to do this. I, I don't know. Maybe I'll think of dropping it. And I can get people to talk about, you know, man, yeah, I, I hadn't really. And so I, I pursue, you know, it kind of persuade them to start talking to me about, you know, their feelings of the class. And then, you know, right before time, you know, to get up and get out happens, I get up and I put my stuff down. And I'm like, what are you doing? You know. Professor's gonna be here any minute, and it's just like, eh, it'll be fine. Screw them. And they'd be like, oh. And then all of a sudden, I pull out, sil you know, the syllabus and start handing it out, and they're like, you know, all the things I said about this class, and you know, you, that, that's still, you know, I'm like, ah, it's no big deal, because I'm trying to break ice with them. I'm trying to be a little bit different. I don't want them to feel, uh, you know. I want them to be able to express themselves, and that's always how I've been. Uh, this professor, he's a little bit different. Um, he he tries to uh, teach things a little bit different. He he tries what we call experiential learning, so you're going to experience things, and that's kind of what he wants them to do. So he sends them out on a mission to learn about the sun by getting a thing called the Illuminator 3000. So in addition to finding and returning the Illuminator, I want you to find three ways the sun is like our god. And they're gonna be in the desert, okay. And they are, the, the, part of the assignment is when you're going to find this Illuminator 3000 in the Cave of Darkness or whatever it was called, uh, you gotta come up with three things that uh, relate the sun to God. Okay, that's interesting. You know, from a child's perspective, that that could be something of, uh, of interest. Cool. All right. So they go through. I always say this stuff all the time, like a super book transition. So what happens now? Ah! 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 The owl. The professor takes them to a door that magically drops them off in the desert. Fine. We're in the desert now because they... I'm pretty sure he, this is just a thing you can do. Uh, and I don't know... I hope in later episodes they kind of explain this door. Because otherwise it's magic. And I know a lot of people in Christian communities don't care for anything that talks about magic. Uh, like my wife's church really doesn't like Harry Potter so yeah they hope they do something with that otherwise um I could see some problems anywho uh they go through the deserts and there has to be some sort of antagonist in this right so there is this owl who's a bit of a jerk and he has a little lackey who's a hummingbird this owl has no clue what the Illuminator 3000 is but he knows hey I gotta have it Okay, fine. So he goes out there and he's like, Oh, hey, I hear you're looking for something. And they're like, Yeah, we sure are. I understand you're looking for the Illuminator 3000. We sure are. We know it's in the Cavern of Darkness, but we don't know where the cavern is. And he points them like, Well, it's over that way to go get it and whatnot. So they go and get it, and it's really not that hard to get. Um, and the one sort of funny thing happens the 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 really small owl I, I think I think his name is Twitch um, he gets thrown into the cave and he bounces around like a pinball and you know causes you know breaks the stone enough that the light comes in and so they can see what they're doing uh, like that was kind of funny um, but everything else not so much um, and you know they get the Illuminator 3000 with this high drama oh that's the Illuminator 2,999, they're like, oh, and then it's like, oh, here's the 3,000, hooray! Like, that's not a joke. I, 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 j just on that alone, I, I, I have to take a shot, because that's not funny. I know you're trying to be funny with that joke, but it's not funny. It, and you try to, if it was supposed to create drama, it didn't. Now, the only drama I've got is taking this. This happens to be um, Sprecher Charged Lemonade. Now, I know Sprecher for root beer. I have no idea what they might do with lemonade. 
but it's charged, so there's a lot of caffeine in this probably, and I'm going to die, but, oh well. One killing joke for another. Ooh. Oh, that is some lemon. Oh, wow. That is some lemon. Ooh. So, anywho, um, you got, you have that, they get the Illuminator, and then the mean owl's like, I want that. Give it to me. And he has it for a split second before the professor just conveniently shows up and he's like, what are you doing? And he's like, well, you know, I blah, blah, blah. And then he sticks his ass into a cactus and it's over. The end. Um, they talk about uh, they, they do try and talk about God being like the sun and they manage to do that assignment whoopie de do It's powerful like the sun, and his words give us light to guide us. It's like, oh, okay, we learned a thing. And they have a recap, which is kind of smart, because, to tell you the truth, it was boring, and I'm glad they had that happen, because I did not care. And then after that, um, they have a guy... What was his name? Dr. Tony Evans. Apparently he is the chaplain for the Dallas Mavericks. Or at least was at one point. And uh, he gets like two minutes to just spout things out and the man doesn't take a breath. It's impressive. It's like the production crew's like, you got two minutes, do your message, go. And he just pumps it out. It's kind of impressive, but if you don't take a breath, I'm a little worried like you're gonna pass out mid-sentence about God's love and then pfft, that's it. So that was kind of wedged at the end. Uh, that's the story. Now, how's the rest of it fair? Um, it's unoriginal for the most part. Uh, you got five little owls who have different personalities and they are one-dimensional as get out um one is really girly girl she likes things sparkling uh one is really smart uh all a's all the time one likes to say all the dad jokes that he can it's like he's already getting ready to become a parent it appears that i've misplaced my lesson pointer well i guess this lesson will be Pointless. And then you have the fat one who is dumb. So he, he's actually two dimensional. He's dumb and hungry all the time. Barely ate anything today. I've only had breakfast, snack fist. That's my snack between breakfast and brunch. Then brunch, then snunch. That's my snack between brunch and lunch. And then you have uh, Twitch who is, who was an owl who's raised by, who was raised by bats. <laughs> Why is he doing that? He was raised by bats. Delightful. Like, that's an interesting premise. So he doesn't, you know, Twitch doesn't speak audible English words, and, you know, you work with that. Okay, that's fine. Um, but, you know, they don't take it any further, at least not in this episode, and that kind of bums me out. Um, the professor, he's, you know, you know, soft-spoken and, you know, I'm smart. Students, we begin every class with the Owl Pledge. Let's begin. And then you've got the villain who's just a villain because, I mean, he doesn't really have any motivation, at least nothing that I see of, like, I, ooh, that professor, he flunked me a long time ago and I don't care for him or anything like that. He's just, I want the Illuminator because they want it. Like, oh, oh, okay, that that's a weak premise, but fine. Uh, so, I don't know, just bland. Nothing about this really pops out at me, aside from the fact that this animation is kind of janky. Um, it's like everything kind of starts and stops. 
Like, I get it. Owls kind of move that way, but... Like, I don't think that was a creative decision that they had. I think they were just working within the budget that they possessed. Because uh, it's... It, it's not... I mean, it doesn't look ugly. The designs are fine, but the the herky jerkiness of the characters uh, kind of just don't work for me. And like I say, when you add in the fact that the story makes them all kind of one-dimensional, like one's the smart one, one's the funny one, one's the dumb one, and the you know the hungry fat guy, I'm not I'm not invested uh, at all because um, I know I can't pull off like. Um, this kid, like this, I will never be that excited for anything. Um, oh, that explains it. Because I think if these are the people who created it, which um, I'm kind of getting the uh, impression, uh, yep, they are the creators. I'm kind of like with the baby at the bottom. Um, he is totally disinterested. I'm kind of the same way. Um, oh, oh, they are forcibly smiling in ways that are wholly uncomfortable. That That's not good. I'll try to get a better image of that. That... <laughs> I don't know why people... Feel the need. You're trying so hard, and you don't need to. It's like... It's okay to look disinterested in life. I'm the same way. I never look interested. For anything. Hell, I remember when I got my doctorate, and my committee was like, Congratulations, Dr. Miller! And they're all smiling and clapping, and they're like, Hey, you should smile! And I'm like, I am. And the only person who got it, well, uh, in the room, I should say, because I had a couple who were Skyping from Canada at the time, they're like, that, that, he's excited, trust me. And it's true, I don't, outside of, like, you know, the ranting that I do, I don't get wound up about things. There's no real point. So, <laughs> it's like, they're, they're faking so hard it hurts. Um, is this worth anything? Not really. Uh, it, it, it's a shot, uh, just because of that one bad joke. Um, it's not anything to get all excited about. Um, yeah, it kind of sucks. Um, but it's just bland. Like, I'm not gonna remember any of this. Oh, there is one point I should, I should make. Um, one of the characters' names is Nora. And Nora does this little bit... I will say this. This is probably the most creative thing that's done in the entire episode. She's like, I saw this in a cartoon once. And she's like, hi, I'm Nora. Can one, can you tell us which is the Illuminator? And then like four objects pop out. She even kind of alludes that, you know, it's like Dora the Explorer. And it's like, what are you doing? Um, I thought it would work, but... No. And then the fat one sees a sandwich and eats it. Who are you talking to? Them. But it didn't work. Mm. Works for me. Like, up until that point, I was like, cool joke! Yay! And then that happened, and it just kind of ruined everything. Um, but other than that, there is nothing here. Um, oh, and the big biggest disappointment that I have with this. Like, okay, cool. You, you're, you're drawing parallels uh, with God and nature. Cool. But you don't even really talk about nature in any kind of scientific way. Like, I know this is for, you know, way little children and whatnot, but you could sort of talk about, like, how it's this big thing out in space just a little bit. You don't even have to get that grandiose, but just, just, just a hair, a hair of science into it. But no, no, it's just not there. Um, and that kind of bums me out. Um, it's just that the sun is big and powerful and gives light. 
okay. I don't know, you could have done so much more with it, but these are really short um, in comparison to a lot of other things that I reviewed. And uh, I, you can only sandwich so much stuff, especially when you give poor Tony Evans like two minutes to cram in another lesson of some sort. <laughs> like, was he doing it before a basketball game? I don't know. Um, but he wedged in his message too. Um, so it all kinds of works. Sort of, kind of, tongue-tied, blah, blah. But, yeah. Welcome back to Give It A Shot. And, um, uh, this one was only, only a shot. And, uh, not really worth much else. So, cool, I guess. I don't know. I don't know if the fish are still back there or not, and hopefully next time we'll have that figured out. Maybe, I don't know. Fuck it. What are, what's production, you know, quality around here? I don't have it. I don't know it. I just do things and people think it's funny. I'm a sad man. So until next time, party people, toodles!